Hello and welcome back to the second in this series of how we make our vlogs. If you haven't seen the first one, I'll link it below. Um, in that one, we just talked about the equipment we use to film and record our vlogs, how we manage all of our media, so all our video clips and all our sound clips, and how we create a library in Final Cut Pro, which is the software that I use. Um, this isn't like a how to make vlogs. Um, kind of tutorial by any means. It's just a little explanation of how I make my vlogs. And in this video, it's gonna be more about the actual editing process itself. A couple of people pointed out in the last video that when I was creating my libraries, I named this one wrong. I named it 217 instead of 271. So if anyone was worried about that, I've now corrected it. <laughs> so the vlog I'm gonna be working on today is this one. 270 from Thorn to Crawl. So I've loaded up the library. Here are all the files that we imported last time. This is the uh, desktops I use. It's quite customizable. I prefer a bigger viewfinder to a standard one. So I've made that a little bit bigger. I don't know all the technical terms to be honest. The timeline comes down here. I've added in the sound bars because I found that find those really useful. There's some tools in here and then all the footage um, clips are shown up here. The way I import my clips, they actually just automatically go in chronological order. The internal batteries on our GoPros has failed, so the date and time is never correct unless I update it each time I switch the cameras on and I always forget to do that. So the GoPro um, clips are always the first clip, but that kind of suits me and you'll see why. So, and then we've got every other clip here and it doesn't matter if it was filmed on my camera or Michael's camera, they basically get put here in chronological order. So that's really, really helpful for the way I edit. So this is the library we've got open at the moment, 270. And the first thing I need to do is create a new project uh, so file, new project, and I'll just call this 270. At the same time, I create a second new project, um, and I call that bloopers. So down here, we've now got our timeline, and this is where we can start doing the actual edit. The first thing I do is I pull down the clips um, from the GoPros, the time-lapse clips. So I put the front camera on the timeline um, so this is file 9510 and 9511 it's just two GoPro clips so there's the beginning of the vlog that's us in Thorn and then we had to change the batteries midway through somewhere just by a swing bridge and then there's us mooring up and crawl so sometimes there's four GoPro clips from each camera, sometimes there's just two. Um, depends how far we go and how long we record for. The next thing I do is I bring down the rear cameras and I actually lay those over the top so that they are at the right point in the journey. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is actually just resize all these clips because the aspect ratio on the time lapse is not right. So if I can do it all together if I highlight them and then just zoom into 140% um, here we go that's a much better aspect ratio so yeah the next thing I do is I line up the views if I click on the V I can just disable the top clip so we just see what's below and what I usually do is I speed up the clip till we find a kind of marker Oh, it looks like our, our back cover's flopped over the camera there. But, okay, so I'm going to line us up with this this red boat here. So as the back comes level with the red boat, I'm just going to cut that clip as like a marker, and I'll disable it. Now I need, with the front camera, to get the boat in the same position. So there's us leaving the mooring, and then there's the little boat. So we're about halfway along there. So if I go forward a few more frames, that's about the same position. So then I can just take the rear facing camera and line that up and then extend it back again. And so now the clips should be round about the same time. So if I switch between them, 
as it's playing. I'll just speed it up. So yeah, so as I, it's a bit of a sunny day, so not the best. But if I just switch between the cameras, you can see that pretty much in the same. There's us going under the bridge and there's him emerging from the bridge. So happy with that. Then I have to do the same with the second clip. I try and change the batteries in the cameras at the same time. Um, I don't always do that. But then it's just a case of doing the same thing for this clip. So we just need to find somewhere to line it up with. When there's not, I usually do it against a boat. So if there's not a boat, it's a little bit annoying. Yeah, there's no boats. I'm going to do it against the bridge. So this is back in February. So the sun's really still low in the sky. There's Michael pulling off from the mooring and there's the swing bridge. So I think we'll just line up against that. So there's the back of the boats leveled with the start of the bridge. So I'll just crop the clip to there, disable it, and then I'll find a similar point with the front camera. Oh. So I'm going to call it about there. Then I'm going to take the bottom clip, line it up to the position of the top clip and extend that back. So now those two should be in order. Okay, so that's like the base of my vlog because there's, that's the whole journey, the time-lapse footage running all the way along. And then the next thing I need to do is get the real-time clips filmed on the iPhones and populate the timeline of the vlog with all, with all of those. So the first thing I usually do is get the intro, which is me and Michael talking to camera. But I think on this vlog we actually moved from our mooring onto the water point which are these finger point moorings before we did that oh yeah and then we went to little <laughs> we walked through thorn so there's a few clips so they're all in order so i can highlight all of those clips those five or so clips and i can drag them down and put them at the beginning of the vlog um because they were all before the timeline started and then here which is the next clip in our our list we've got the audio of us uh, doing our intro and if I play that you can hear how bad the audio is so that was recorded on my camera and my microphone's terrible which is why we also use the um, handy recorder so this is the audio clip on the train and stuff so I'm sure this is so nice so much better quality so the next thing I have to do is link these two clips and I could do that in a similar way that I did the GoPro clips, the front and back cameras to sync them. But Final Cut Pro has actually got a tool that does it for me. So I just highlight the two clips, the audio clip and the video clip. And now they've got this yellow box around them to show you they're highlighted. And I just go under the clip menu, synchronize clips, and it'll think about it for a minute. And it should synchronize it and it creates a brand new clip and it always puts that to the bottom of this bar here and then now it's really quiet but we've had some really nice neighbors we've got the good quality audio on the uh, visual clip on the video clip i can grab grab that clip clip and pull it down and put it before the time lapse footage starts so i'll need to go through that and edit it down but for now i'm just going to fix the the audio a little bit. Audio is recording. So I've got these um, time oh. bars on the right hand side. Actually, let me just mute it. So as that's playing, you can see how loud the clip is. For for us talking, I always try and keep it around the minus three mark. Otherwise, it's too quiet. I just peaked then. Um, oh, it didn't quite peak. But anything over zero is far too loud. So minus three to minus six is ideal. Um, and there's a couple of tools I just used to help me do that. I select the limiter and I drag that down. And then um, in this menu here, I've got the sound tools. And I can click on this control panel and open that up. And the gain I change to 20, between 10 and 20 usually. The release I change to 310. And the output level I just take down to minus 4.5. Um, and then that's applied on the sound here. 
And then if I play it again, you can see it's, it's got a little bit louder. Um, well, morning, which with the permission of the CRT. They're very nice, very supportive. Yeah, very nice. Let us stay. Because we had, uh, we, we, well, be... Um, but then it's still a bit fuzzy. There's still a bit of background noise. And there's a few more tools you can use here. And I found the best one for me on our sound is just to do the noise removal. And you can see the bar kind of cleaning up down there. It takes kind of the background noise out a little bit. So I'll play it again circumstances that came up as an emergency and we just couldn't be here we had to be on the so that just cleans that up a bit um so there's that clip in now i just need to work th through the rest of the clips that were shot on the phones um and put them in the right point along the timeline okay so let's just line a couple up and give you an idea so here's michael uh, waiting to go into the under the swing bridge it hasn't opened yet so I'll just play the timeline here he is reversing off the finger moorings and then here is him waiting and you just about see me walking backwards and forwards on the bridge doing the barriers so then I click on the blade tool um, there's a there's a menu here but the shortcut to that is uh, command B so I can just click on the blade tool and then if I hold shift down, it will cut through both the top clip and the bottom clip. And then I can drag that clip down. And then I can move on to the next clip. The next clip is the bridge opening. Michael backing up a little bit, waiting to go through. So I just need to find that on the timeline. There it is about there. And just zoom in a bit. So shift, you get the blade tool, clip, cut the clips and then pull that one down. And that's now in the timeline. And then here he is coming through. So play that a bit more and it's about there. So pause the video, get the blade tool, shift, cut both clips, drag that clip down. So as you can see now on my timeline I've got the real-time clips mixed in with the time lapse. So this is real time, this is time lapse, this is real time. And then that just means that everything is now in the right chronological order for me to do the the edit when I'm ready to start that. So yeah, I remember on this day, I didn't actually record anything until the next wooden bridge, which is a couple of miles away, which is really annoying. So there's going to be an awful lot of time lapse. And it's not the best time lapse footage because here we're cruising into the sun. The view backwards of Michael is much better because the lighting is better. Um, just speed that up. So yeah, here's us passing Blue Water Marina. And I'm off like way behind the marina trying to walk and there's the lovely towpath on the right hand side that I should be on. And finally we get to the swing bridge. So there's our boat approaching in the distance. So just need to find that. I think that's probably about here. So blade, cut both clips and then pull that down. And then the next clip is uh, Michael just still approaching. I'm not sure that's going to be the best clip to use, but it was where I was stood at the time on the control panel. Call that about there because it's before the bridge starts raising. And then Michael very helpfully recorded this clip from the back of the boat, which is actually really nice of the, um, the swing bridge going up. So I'll play the timeline, the time lapse is about there, and I'll insert Michael's clip just there. And there's the boat coming through terrible terrible lighting because it's into the sun again um so that's, there's me <laughs> trying to get that terrible clip with george so i'll cut that there and then pull that clip down and then move on to the next clip so that's probably not long after he's passed under the bridge 
And to try and find the right place, it's not always easy. Um, but here I've got this dog on the towpath to help. And we've got the windmills in the distance. So let's play the time lapse and see if I can spot where that is. Ah, oh, there's the dog. I think that's the dog. So we've just gone past the dog and there's the windmills in the distance. So I'm going to call it there. Uh, cut both the time lapse clips and pull that clip down. Into the timeline. So basically I have to do, go through and do that for all these clips. Um, all these hundreds of clips that we filmed on the day. So I'm not going to record that whole process. Um, but once that's done, I'll come back and show you the next step. So if I can't find a clip, something that does help me is if I look at the rear recording, I might find Michael or myself holding up a camera um, so that gives me a clue as to where the, the clip should go as well so that's quite helpful so I think that is me recording these dogs um, and what's happened here is the clip I was just obviously holding the camera at the wrong angle when I pressed record so it thinks it's a portrait clip and not a landscape clip so I can just change the um, position of that. So I just rotate it by 90 degrees and then zoom in. If I take it to 185%, usually is the right. And then we've got yeah. the dog clips. Okay, so this is a really nice clip, but there's not, no real like landmarks <laughs> to help me find it on the um, on the time lapse footage. I remember I was really obsessed with filming windmills this day, so I'll look at the back and see if I hold up the camera. Actually, I think that was the second dog one, so I'll just move the dog there. Now I need a bit of me pointing the camera forwards. There we go, just held the camera up and then if I switch to forward view, you can see the shape of the tree here and the tree here matches. Well, that one matches. Oh, and there's that one. So I am going to call that there. As you can see, this is quite a boring task. <laughs> There's no locks today, I don't think, but if you think sometimes I might be doing this where we go through a flight of like 20 or even 10 locks, sometimes I'll just automatically film similar things at each lock. So, and I'm really, really obsessive about putting each lock in the vlog. So if we go through 10 locks, there'll be 10 locks in the vlog. And I'm really, really particular about making sure if I label a, a lock as lock 10, then the footage I'm showing is definitely of that look. So that involves a little bit of hard work trying to work that out. I don't always make it easy for myself. Sometimes I film the lock numbers and that's really, really helpful. Like if they're are like written on the gates or whatever, or if there's a sign. Um, but other times I'm so distracted with doing the locks that I forget to do that. And then sometimes I won't film anything at a lock, so I'll just be left with time lapse at a lock. So yes, it can be quite fun. Um, but there's no locks in this one, I don't think, just a couple of bridges. Okay, here we are approaching Troll, so pretty much got most of the clips now. Just a couple more. That's mooring up. And then just the outro left to do, so 
we don't always film an outro and it's really annoying when I start to edit a video and I find that we haven't got one. Sometimes we're just too tired, so not always possible. So here is... Um, the video and this will be the audio. Apparently causing... And the clips are in the right place on this chronological order because the iPhones always have the right time, obviously, because they're iPhones and they're connected to the internet. And the sound recorder has got an internal battery, so whenever we change the batteries, it just remembers what time it is. So they they stay in the right place. So it's really easy to match up the clips. So highlight the two clips, the audio and the video, synchronize them, and wait for it to do its thing. The canal. And so the road crosses the canal and then immediately crosses the railway line. And there we have the f outro. So I can just drag that down to the end of the timeline, add on my limiter, open it up and adjust the settings. Check the levels using the audio bars, this looks fine to me. Add on the noise removal, clean it up a little bit. And there we have the rough edit. And at the moment, this is quite short, we've got half an hour's worth of footage there. Usually I have between half an hour and an hour. Anything over an hour, I know it's going to be a long vlog. <laughs> Um, the Ribble link, I had like about two and a half hours of footage, so that's why that one got split into two. Um, but I like to get them down to between 10 minutes and half an hour. I'm not too fussy about it because I like to tell the story of what happened on the day. On Sometimes on the day we only have 10 minutes worth of footage, sometimes on the day we have half an hour, so the vlog just kind of dictates what it's going to be. And the next part of the process is my least favourite. It's where I create the voiceover. What I do is I watch the rough edit through that I've just created and I decide what I want to say. And that's a combination of things that happened on the day and some information about the history of the area or just some local information. So I get all that written and then I have to record it. And I hate recording it. <laughs> it's my least favourite thing. It doesn't come naturally to me at all. Um, I have to write a script because I just can't do it off the cuff. Um, I'm doing this one off the cuff and I'm not comfortable with it at all. But yeah, so that takes a little while just to decide what I want to say and um, then physically record it. When I write the voiceover, the first thing I do is actually listen to the intro um, and edit that bit just so I can remember what happened on the day, <laughs> what we've already talked about, because um, I don't want to repeat it. Um, and yeah, it'll just remind me what we actually did on the day. Audio is recording. Ah. Welcome to one. So I don't need that. Ah. Welcome to one. I'll just start it where Michael says welcome. Welcome to one month later. <laughs> We've been here for a month. We have When we first started doing vlogs, I used to have to cut the intros and the outros a lot. But after 270 vlogs, we're finally starting to get a bit better. So a lot of the time I can just leave it as it is. Um, I haven't really cut much out of it at all, um, just one tiny bit and then one little blooper at the end which isn't that funny so I might not leave it in. Um, I think I'm going to go, so that's just us on the mooring and then that's coming into the fig mooring. So in the intro we actually talk about going into thorns so I'm just going to put those clips above that. Um, I can't remember where it was now. Recycling and waste and water. So we came on here this morning and then we went one last trip to Thorn to stock. So yeah, we talk about the one last trip to Thorn. So I'm going to put these three clips of that trip above that. I'm going to take the sound completely out of them. Um, Cut from Little and Sainz. So to do that, just click on this, highlight the three clips, click on the sound. 
uh, menu and take the volume right the way down. Freeze on the bakery and the green grocer. And to say goodbye to the vanilla slices from the bakery. <laughs> Last trip to Thornton to stock up from Little and Sainsbury's and the bakery and the... And then we went one last trip to Thorn to stock up from Little and Sainsbury's and the bakery and the greengrocer. To say goodbye to the vanilla slices from the bakery. <laughs> Sigh. That's the real reason we stuck here. Pretty much, yeah. The other day we went to the bakery and Michael came out and he was going with words. There's been an error. There's been an error. He bought two vanilla slices instead of one. I... So then the other thing I'm going to do is edit the outro. So I know what we said at the end of the trip. Okay, so I've written the voiceover and I've had a quick run through to make sure it makes sense and now I just have the fun task of recording it. The first order of business for the day is to move from the towpath moorings on I hate it. The first order of business for the the first order of business for the The first order of business for the day is to move from the towpath moorings onto the finger moorings so we can top up our water tank. The first order of business for the day is to move from the towpath moorings onto the finger moorings so we can top up our water tank. The building in front of us here houses the L Sand. And that's where I'm going to leave this video for today. In the next part I'll show you how I fine tune the edit and get it exported and uploaded onto YouTube. Remember I'm not saying this is the correct way to edit, it's just how I do it.